What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codeby.com and in this video, we're going to look at NumPy operations for data analysis with Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at NumPy operations. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codeby.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, continuing on with our data analysis for Python course, it's time to look at NumPy operations. And we've been talking a little bit about NumPy in the last video, it showed you some very basic things. And if you don't remember, we have been watching the video for a while, I'm in my C slash DA data analysis directory. I've got my Jupyter notebook running, we're running our testing Jupyter Notebook, and I went through and I deleted some of the stuff we did in the last video to clean this up. You know, remember we import NumPy as MP, shift enter to run this so we can use NumPy, and now we're ready to go. So, like I said, in this video, we want to look at NumPy operations, specifically mathematical operations. We're also going to look at universal functions that kind of go hand in hand with NumPy operations, so that should be cool. So, when I'm talking about NumPy operations, I'm talking about math. We want to be able to do math on the numbers in our NumPy array. So let's just create an array really quickly. I'm going to call this array. And let's let's go np.a range. And let's go from zero to 11. We're just going to create a basic array. And if we run this, we can see we have an array with some dummy data in here from zero to 10. So zero to 11, not including 11. So stops at 10. So there's basically a couple of ways we can do math, we can do something called arrays with arrays. And we can do something called arrays with scalars and scalars are just numbers, basically, we'll talk about that in a second. But let's look at arrays first. So we've got our array, we can basically just add our array to it. And when we do that, we see each element in our array gets added to itself, array plus array. So three plus three is six, 10 plus 10 is 20, right? Pretty simple. Now we can use all the sort of math operators that we want for this, we can do a minus. So every element minus itself is going to be zero, that makes sense, we can multiply every element times itself, nine times nine, 81, 10 times 10, 100. That's cool, we can divide. Now this is actually interesting, we're going to get a warning here. And that's because the first element is zero. So zero divided by zero, if you remember way back in like elementary school math, you can't take zero divided by zero. So that's a, a null value. So we get a null and a warning. If you try and take zero divided by zero, just using Python, it won't even let you do it, right? You just get this division by zero error, and it just kind of dies on you. That's kind of a nice thing about NumPy, it allows you to still do it, it just returns a null object a null value for zero divided by zero. Same thing when you divide any number by zero, you get infinity, right? Same thing, we'll get an infinity warning, and it won't just crap out on us. You know, if we went normally eight divided by zero, and ran this, we just get this, you know, division by zero can't do that error with regular Python, with NumPy arrays, we can do that. And we'll look at that in just a second. So where are we at here dividing, we can also do exponents, double stars, right? And so two to the second power is four, nine to the ninth power is a very big number, right? 10 to the 10th power is ooh, even bigger. So uh, that's how you do exponents, very basic. So this is arrays with array operations, right? We can also let's get rid of this. We can also do arrays with scalar operations and scalars, like I said, are just numbers. So we could go array plus 10, 10 is a scalar, right? Just think of scalars as 10. Or just think of scalars as numbers, right? So this will add 10 to every element of our array. So zero plus 10 is 10. Uh, four plus 10 is 14. 10 plus 10 is 20. And again, you can use the same math. So you can do, you know, minus 10. So we have negative 10, right? You can multiply So each one here we can divide. So this will give us an example of that infinity error, right? Uh, let's go divided by zero. So we get nan, that's that null object, remember zero divided by zero is null, but the rest of them are infinity, seven divided by zero infinity, three divided by zero infinity. And like I said, regular Python would just crap out on us, it would just die. 
But with a NumPy array, it allows us to continue on uh, doing its thing. So it's very, very cool. So those are basic operations, NumPy operations, math operations that we can do. You're always going to want to do different types of math with you know, data analysis. And this is just a very basic, very easy way to do it. So I mentioned you can also use a bunch of NumPy functions. There's a bunch of universal functions built into NumPy that we can use. And we use them like we use any sort of Python function. We just call them. So mp dot square root, right? And it's a function. And then what do we want to run this on? Our array. So we just pass in array as the argument to the function. And that will take the square root of every single element, right? Very cool. Uh, let's see, uh, we can go max to define the max element. Well, that's 10, right? The highest number is 10. We can go min to find the lowest one. That's zero, right? We can call trig functions like sine, cosine, all those good things, right? So we get the sine of each object. Uh, you can do cosine. Uh, tangent, I think. Is tan one of them? Uh, tangent, cotangent. I don't even remember. That's probably not a thing. Cosine, maybe? Cotangent? No. Anyway, <laughs> we'll look at a list of all of these in just a second. Uh, we can find the sign, not the, not the trig sign, but the positive or negative sign of each element. You can see here, well, zero doesn't have a sign, but the rest of them are positive, so we get a one for each one, right? If some of these, if we, if we went negative 10 here and then ran this thing again, so we have some negative numbers, and then we run this again, we get negative, 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 negative for all these first numbers here, right? And then it hits zero and then it flips to positive. So we could find the sign. Very cool. Uh, we could find the absolute value, just absolute. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. The absolute value of positive 10 is 10. So very cool. And, and just a, an easy way to do basic things to your data, to your numbers in your array. So like I mentioned, there is a list of these. Uh, let's see, got it written down somewhere. Universal functions for NumPy. Let's just head over here to our web browser. And it's just at docs.scipy.org forward slash doc forward slash NumPy forward slash reference forward slash ufunks. Bring the ufunk. I don't know. Dot <laughs> HTML. And we just get to this universal function page. And if we scroll down towards the bottom, we get an actual list of all of these. So here's the math ones. We could call math operators as universal functions, right? We just did adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, just using the multiplication sign and the additional sign, we could have also used the function. I think it's kind of weird to call the add function when you want to add, when you could just put the plus sign on your keyboard, uh, but you could. Uh, negative, positive, we can find powers, the remainders, that's interesting. Uh, absolute value, we looked at that one. Uh, nearest integer. Uh, logarithm, exponents, square roots, trig functions. Is there, what did we look, what was the one we messed up with? Cotangent, maybe? Is that in there? There's tangent. Is cotangent even a sign function? I don't know. It's been so many years since I did trigonometry, I don't remember. But anyway, you can you see a list of all the trig stuff you can do. And there's some other ones, some comparison functions you can play with if you're interested and all that good stuff. So read through this if you're into this sort of thing. I've told you the ones that you're going to use for the most part. So we'll just kind of leave it at that. So those are NumPy math operations using arrays, using scalars, uh, using universal functions, however you want to do it. Very, very easy with NumPy. Also, one of the reasons why we like NumPy, it's just really easy to use and very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses over 40 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.